All right, welcome back. Time to bring in our panel right now. With us today, we have former state party chair for the Indiana Democrats, Robin Winston, along with 2016 vice chair for the Indiana Trump campaign, Tony Samuel, and two former state lawmakers, Republican Mike Murphy and Democrat Terry Austin. Let's start with the two of you. You've both served in the legislature. Mike, what's your reaction to everything that we saw here in the final days with yet another final revised budget plan, the final, final plan? They came out in the final hours after a, a few hiccups there in the process. I think you need to keep a pretty broad perspective. None of these things ever happen perfectly. And I think the blocking and tackling, for the most part, went very well for the Republicans. They, they put the money where they should in most cases, not all cases. But I remember back in 97, I was on the Ways and Means Committee, and uh, somebody, I won't say who, put something in the budget after we had voted on it. Just went to LSA and said, we forgot to put this in and put it in. And so. Things happen all the time. I, overall, I think I'd give them an A minus. A pretty frenetic finish. Terry, you've seen a lot of things a as well. Pretty unusual ending. What happened there? Well, I think they saved some of the real plums for the very last minute because they didn't want to vet them. Um, raises for statewide officials, um, some of the tweaks. The Senate woke up and said, we can't do this to our schools when they realized that the voucher program was getting doubled and our schools were actually going to lose money. So our they public added schools. more in there at the so end they, for public yeah, schools. Yeah, they took $300,000 yeah. out of the million they were appropriating to the pension fund, tossed it at the schools just to move the needle a little bit. But in the end, many schools still lost revenue. Tony, what do you make of how things ended up overall? I think they worked really hard. Um, nobody expected it to go that late. You know, they were they were trying to get done earlier, obviously, or go into Friday, but they didn't want to go into Friday, so you know they stuck around. Some good things got done. Technically, um, they did go into Friday. They, Let's they point out, right? Friday, the early they didn't hours have of to Friday, leave right? And come back the next <laughs> day. Um, the good things got done. Uh, uh, starting pay for for state troopers, state police, that's seventy thousand dollars. That's a big thing. A big win for the school choice uh, effort. Um, uh, more money for vouchers, prescription a drug rebate uh, bill got uh, got passed. That saves uh, consumers money at the point of sale. They'll, they'll get the rebates instead of it, them being locked up with the PBMs and insurers. You mentioned the state troopers and the raises they got. Of course, elected officials, as Terry mentioned, also got a bit of a raise. Robin, what was your reaction to the session overall and these, these raises for elected officials that were put in at the last minute, a little bit of backlash over that. What'd you make of all of that? Well, I think they listen to the people that uh, are in public schools because they did have to scramble around and find more money because it dawned on them that, wait a minute, my district's actually gonna lose money in the second year of the budget. So they had to scramble to do that. As far as the pay raises, every public school superintendent in Indiana has to put their salary, their contract online, and even post it in the newspaper for people to read but none of this went on for governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, all the other statewide offices. It should have been at least informed of the public that that was going on. Big raises, 80% uh, some raises in some cases. Terry, the optics are never all that great for elected officials uh, to get a big pay raise of that nature along those lines uh, with pay raises, as we said, nearly 90% in some instances. Well, and teachers don't get any raise. You know, they found money to give politicians a raise, but no money for teachers, and we still are not count, catching up to the national average. Mike, your thoughts on the, on the raises? Well, they kick in after first Governor Holcomb leaves believe, office, will be I the next governor. I believe they deserve the raises, but if you believe they deserve the raises, there's absolutely no problem. You shouldn't hide them. You should bring them out in a committee, talk about it, debate it, take a vote, put people on roll call notice, um, and, and, and they didn't do that. But if you don't give people in those positions decent raises, then you're gonna, you, you, you get what you pay for, right? And you're gonna end up with un, unqualified, incompetent people in the governor's office, the secretary of state's office, and all those other ministerial offices. So I agree with the raises, I just don't agree with the way they did it. To put the lieutenant governor in a tough spot, she's running for governor, she'd get that pay raise. That's right. Yeah, she kind of spoke out about uh, the optics of some of it this week as well. Let's also talk about this Mike Pence news. Uh, testifying for a federal grand jury on Thursday for seven hours in Washington. Tony, wh what's the reaction to all of this in Trump world? Well, if, if you go back to January 6th, um, you know, what the, what the special counsel at the DOJ is looking for is something that he can use against Trump to indict Trump. But when you go back to that day, you have to remember there were legislators, uh, both House and Senate, that were looking to challenge 
um, the, the results in states that were not following their own state law. And there was the, a movement to do an electoral commission, a 10-day audit of the whole process. So when you're Trump, you want that to take place. Democrats have done this three times in the last 10 years where they've challenged the electoral counts. That's what was going to happen. But nothing like this. Right. Well, I, 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 I beg to differ. I mean, I mean in terms of the do, response do, and the rally do, well, and the what rally, happened after. Well, I know the whole narrative has changed from what the intent of that day for Trump world, for President Trump was. But what about this hearing, the, the, the mm -hmm. federal grand jury, Mike Pence testifying, are people in Trump world upset that even though he had to, that he was in there for seven hours this week? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think um, that th they should be because I don't know what he can say that will yeah. you know, be bad for Trump world. When, again, I go to that point, they wanted that debate to take place. They didn't want that riot to take place. Robin, what do you, what do you make of all this? <laughs> Come and join me. Let's go up to the Capitol. I'll walk with you. Sound familiar? The bottom line is, is that he said, come and go with me to the Capitol. Didn't show. And why would you oppose somebody testifying? He filed, uh, his attorneys filed suit to prevent Mike Pence from testifying. Tony, you're right about maybe all the machinations inside the building. I'm talking about the people scaling outside the building that fought with police and did those things. That's what we're trying to get to well, the bottom line on. Well, we but we're trying to get to the bottom line on that, and that's what they asked the, the vice president to talk about. Okay. We've also got to talk about the mayoral primaries happening uh, next week here in Indianapolis and in cities all across the state. Uh, Mike, what are you watching for this week at the polls? Well, I mean, it's, it all comes down to name ID. You know, what happens in these primaries is maybe 10 to 13 percent of the registered voters in each party vote. They're the most hardcore people. And in some cities, it kind of decides the race, depending on whether it's sort of a one-sided Yeah, it's the precinct committee men, it's those, the yeah. ward chairman, those kinds of people here in Indianapolis, for example. And so um, it'll be completely name ID. Um, I, I assume that Hogsett wins the Democratic primary, and I assume that Shreve wins the Republican primary, because a big function of name ID is money. Uh, Hogsett, though, Mayor Hogsett is facing more of a primary challenge than he has in the past with a state representative running against him uh, in that race. Uh, even if he prevails, uh, a little difficult, a little more difficult this year for the mayor having to uh, contend with a primary challenge here this, this early in, in the campaign year. I don't think so. I mean, I think the, that's one thing the Democrat Party has consistently had is, you know, a robust primary process and then it's up to party leaders the top elected officials to reach out to all the candidates bring the party back together again unify okay. everyone find out how they could incorporate some of their agenda items in all right own. and we're going to talk more about some of the other mayoral races happening across the state some of the other primaries taking place next week as voters go to the polls tuesday we'll hear from some of the candidates in fort wayne right after this